So this is going to be part two of the uh, front suspension and brake video. Uh, most of this was recorded a long time ago. I had a little feedback about using a microphone. Um, that won't be happening in the old videos. Um, probably in the new videos either, but I will try to do a better job of turning down the background music because I know some stuff wasn't... Uh, you couldn't hear it too well. So um, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and show you um basically what i did to get the calipers mounted the making the brackets there'll be some pictures of those um also the hub setup and then um i'll take a video of what all this looks like uh, on the car so enjoy if you have any comments or questions uh, you can put them down and i'll try to get back to you so i decided to throw a little video together on a big break upgrade for my Datsun. 510, um, I use 280ZX um, spindle strut assemblies. You might look at this and say, hey, that doesn't look like a 280ZX spindle strut. You're right in that I'm also doing a suspension conversion that lets me use S13240SX coilovers. And this is an adapter that I got from Response Type. Um, I can put a link. But it's a full kit, comes with all the hardware, and lets you bolt that on. Um, that's not what this video is about. But uh, most... I've done this a few different times. If you have a welder, basically you have to have a welder. Or at least some way to um, locate things if you took it to somebody else. Um, I've done two different calipers on my previous setup. I did first generation Dodge Viper calipers and I did first generation CTSV um, on this on the 280ZX I don't recommend ever trying the CTSV ones it's way too difficult to do on the Dodge Viper ones because it's difficult to do because the mounting ears are um, the mounting ears are too far apart it just causes a lot of problems with the Viper calipers Basically, you're just making little extensions, and that's what I did. I made extensions, I bolted those extensions on, made sure everything was in place for the caliper being centered, and then I weld it on. Um, as far as caliper being centered, that's one thing that's made this project I'm doing right now not as easy. Um, in the past, the pads have always been wide enough. I mean, you probably run into this before if you're changing pads. You really have to get the pistons all the way back in there. You put new pads in there and then it's super snug on the rotor. These are not super snug on the rotor. Um, I think they have options for wider pads and so getting that centered, I've already done one um, but I'll show you kind of how I did it. It looks really janky but I think it works. So getting it centered is a little more of a challenge. Uh, the other part to these calipers is they don't have mounting ears on them. So for this, you're putting little tabs. The caliper has ears, and the caliper sits this way. This actually is radial mounted. Um, that means that it bolts in from the top. So it calls for a different kind of bracket to be made for that. Um, I've started this. Also, never paint your calipers before you're going to do something like this because obviously it doesn't work out. Um, so what I've done is I've made, I'm using 3 8 which is steel, which is probably overkill, but I'm not going to be ever worried about it either. Um, made uh, this portion of the bracket. Then there's another portion of the bracket that is bolted to the spindle to this part. And then uh, once you get those placed up there, you do a little uh, tinkering around with exactly where you want the placement is, and then you burn a couple strong tacks in there and then weld it up. So these sound simple, right? But these plates, a I have a bandsaw, which is nice. You could use a cutoff wheel. It's not that that has to be that precision. These holes have to be 
exact. And I tapped them. Uh, so it's a M12 by 1.75 thread. Um, I have a drill press from Harbor Freight just making sure that they're exactly right and then we run the tap through is exactly straight because you're talking about a pretty long bolt that goes through there and if it's off any you'll have to take other measures don't ask me how I know um, so that's basically a, a little start to getting them on there um, I'm using this is the other part of my upgrade. So this is the other plate. So this bolts through. Um, you actually have to take the rotor off to get these in. I think you can, if they're a little shorter, you could probably get them in. But it doesn't matter. You're never going to be taking this bracket off again for any reason, really. The garage is a hash, but so be it. So now you can see how these brackets work. So this one bolts on to the hub hub assembly this one bolts on there and then you know weld there and weld the other side um, as far as lining it up I have to do a little adjustment on this one but you'll you always want to make sure that it's centered that's the key thing um, you may wonder why I have a Allen wrench I've done this already on another one and basically I tried a different few different ways of shimming it and on these calipers they actually have a block it's right there um, and the distance on this one between that block and the rotor if you close it up on this side is going to put me centered basically so I have one there I have another one down in there you could measure, you could, if, like I said before, if you have pads that are full, you know, basically take up the whole, these don't, you know, these move a lot. Um, my other setups when I did this, that's how I did it. So, um, you want to make sure it's centered, you want to make sure it's high and low the way you want. I might adjust a little bit on that. Yeah, looks pretty good. So I'll let that cool, and I'll go do the other side. Okay, so this is a shot of everything together. So, in case you want a short list, I know I've repeated myself here, but StopTech ST60 calipers, custom-made rotors from Coleman. You just go on there get the form they're they're really knowledgeable so I made a mistake on my form and they called me to make sure everything was right they can make hats or you can adapt hats from another car I did these are Corvette C5 hats from a two-piece rotor set DBA this breaks Australia was the company although it could be anybody these are techno toy aluminum hubs that convert to five lugs that's the other reason they're very well made um, if you were going to put this together basically um, other than just knowing where to get the parts it's not that difficult one of the reasons that besides the hat offset kind of putting this in the right spot for wheels and what have you of the Corvette C5 is that the center register the center hole of this hat is smaller than the back of a 280ZX hub so if you're familiar with how brakes bolt to a 280ZX hub they actually bolt on the back Ooh. just one second they bolt on the back of the hub unlike most rotors nowadays that slip on the front so as long as you get that center hole 
correct. That's what's going to locate your rotor to make sure that it's um, not out of round, if that makes sense. And I had the machine shop also do the five holes for on a stock hub that you need to locate it, but that's not the precision part of this. The precision part is doing the um, center hole. Um, let's see. So yeah, once you do that, take it to a machine shop, um, you can bolt those on. And then the other part is obviously the bracket that we've gone over. Uh, just to show you how the adapters work. So that is the bottom of the adapter that we did in the last video. Um, right here below that you'll see these offset spacers, bump steer spacers. Uh, most people with lowered 510s run those anyway. These offset and they move it out a bit so that things will fit and then you can bolt the S13 or probably S14 if you chose. I think the only difference is you have to make the holes bigger or get bigger bolts. And so then that leads up. So that's the fuel suspension. Um, the other thing that's nice about these adapters is if you notice one of the holes is slotted and it actually allows you to move the hub in and out for camber. Um, I honestly think there's enough adjustment you wouldn't even need camber plates if you ran these. They do move the wheel out 20 millimeters, but for most wheel offsets with modern wheel, that's actually a good thing for people. So um, that's that part. And then up on top, this is my old ground control top plate. You can still use that, or I still used it. I just had to take a Dremel. This portion was wider. I had to take a Dremel and make that larger. Other than that, it just bolts right in there. So that is the end of this video. Um, if you have any questions on anything, you can leave it down below, and I'd be happy to answer them. But Essentially with a welder, some steel, and a cutoff wheel, and some patience, you can do this. This is the third different time I've done it. I've never had any brake shimmy issues. I've never had any. The worst thing is um, with the CTSV calipers I mentioned before, the pads were a little wider than the rotor surface here, so there was a teeny bit of pad overhang. But I've seen worse on stock setups than I saw on that. With this being custom made, I obviously don't have any issues with that. Everything lines up. It goes right to the edge of the rotor for whatever that's worth. So, at any rate, hit me up if you have any questions. Um, next time, I think we're going to get into more of uh, just tearing down the car. I might put up the Haltech install that I did before I yanked the engine out, which is out now. Um, yeah. See you next time.